All right, so this is all tracks we're looking at. So what we're looking at here is um, first hooked on this input tool. And what this allows me to do is connect to data in a variety of ways. Okay. So right now I can see uh, these are all the file types that Altex can natively connect to. All okay. your basic things that are you know on someone's machine, including a lot of spatial file types. Okay. Or we can connect to data sources. So these would be all of your databases. As you can see, a lot of ODBC connections, right. as well as some cloud connectors like Adobe, um, Microsoft, Azure Data Lake, Data Warehouse, uh, and so on. Okay. Pretty agnostic as to about connecting to data. Additionally, we can connect to some API type connections like Salesforce. All right, that was my next question. Okay, yeah. on the so, API side. All right. Yeah. So we do have some like these that we pre maintain and build, um, but if you did have others that you were connecting to, we do have kind of an open form to send API or requests. Requests, and then you would actually be able to build something? Yep, exactly. Okay. Once I get data into Alteryx, then I've got. Uh, dozens of tools to prepare that. Each of these icons is a step in the process. Okay. okay. So here I'm using a formula to cal do a calculated field. The table stakes, everybody can do that, right? Right. Um, but that's the type of steps that these are. So this one is transposing data. If I look at this data, I've kind of got this name value pair, something maybe I parsed out of a JSON file, right? Um, and I want to take this and have one row per customer instead of a repeating customer that value, and then take the column name or the headers from this name column. Okay, and then I can look and see what did the data look like after I perform this step, and I can see exactly what that looks like. Okay. So it makes everything very traceable. Yeah, yeah. So I can see exactly what's going on in the process. Okay. Once so you also know if it's broken, where to go back to fix exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. That's one of the great things for troubleshooting. Right. Even breaks, I actually see a red exclamation point right. on the tool where I ran into an error. Or if you didn't get the desired result, you know back, okay, let's, yeah, we can go back through the steps back. and trace back. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I can blend that data together. I make one nice, clean, analytic data set, in this case from these three sources. From here, I can do... Uh, Geospatial analytics. Do you guys do any sort of location analysis? We do. Today? Okay. We do. Yeah. Okay. So if we get requests to open a new center in a new location, the first thing we do is we look at the GIS and take a look at you know bus routes and um, we may look at the philanthropic health in yeah. that area. So yeah, we go to you know public sources and private sources that we have available okay. to be able to get to that. Yeah. Perfect. So, um, and within here, you can take spatial data. We can read in lines, polygons, and points as actual spatial objects. So, like you mentioned, bus route. If I had a bus route, so like ArcGIS type of stuff. Yeah, yeah okay. the same type of thing. Just like ArcGIS can, I can actually read in those polygons and view them. Okay. Okay. And uh, I can do spatial calculations ac across those. So, let's say I had a list of, uh, you know individuals and I wanted to see like what was the closest uh, center that I had to them. Right. Right? I can use a find nearest tool to identify the closest center to each of those. Uh, I could create a polygon. Let's say I want to see which people are not within 10 minutes of one of my centers. Right. Right. And then I can kind of see that void. Where should I maybe put something? Okay. So I could do create a trade area around my center points and then I can do a spatial match around between my you know individuals and those centers and find where I'm missing some people. So then I know if I need to supplement uh, transportation, if I need to reach out and try to do that on my own, if I... Yep. Okay. Yep. So you can start to, you know, investigate those things, okay? Right. Um, so lots of geospatial processing, similar to our GIS in functions, although much more flexible as part of getting data into the products and doing those calculations. Well, I can see where they would probably be able to work together where you could actually pull exactly. the data. Yeah. Say, I was going to say, yeah. If you were wanting to use, especially if you wanted to use their their very rich visual mapping software, right. you would probably still do that here. You would do that in Alteryx. But being able, but to, being able to pipeline, pipeline and extrapolate the data and then strip it, you could exactly. be able to do that. Yeah, I got okay. it. I'm with you. Um, we can also do uh, predictive analytics inside of Alteryx. So we have a full integration with R and Python. Okay, and we have a bunch of pre-built models. This is a logistic regression. You can see it's very easy to configure. I'm just choosing what my target variable is and what variables I help think would predict that. This happens to be targeted marketing data. So people that responded in the past and what I think, you know, contributes got to, to that. So, so for us with donors, we'd be able to look and see, okay, exactly. who's made donations in the past, how big, yep. and then we'd be able to reach yep. back out to them. In fact, I actually have an exact model that's doing that With right donors, now. Oh, okay. Um, so this was an education donor. Right, right but which would be us, in, yeah. Um, you know, so it, some uh, 
information about did they donate in the past? You know, degrees. You know, when did they first start um, college? Where did they go to school? You know, some other information around that, and running that through a whole bunch of different models and comparing them to each other, and then I get a report at the end of which model best uh, explains you know, how likely someone is to donate. You know, so if I was going to say, you know, I only have money to really target my top 40% of people, I'd go up here and say, okay, you know, it's like a forest model performs best okay. you know, at that 40%. I'm going to capture about 80% of the people that would be donating by only targeting 40% of individuals. I got you. Is the way I would read that chart. Okay. Yeah, we have a bunch of pre built models. You can see a bunch of these here. Um, we have other ones as well as like time series and predictive uh, grouping, like doing clustering models and things of that nature. All in that same kind of point and click, easy to use environment. Yeah, because that saves us a bunch of time as yeah. far as the modeling part of it. You've already done that part of it, and now we just have to be able to extrapolate data yep. and then understand what we're looking at. Yep, exactly. All right. Um, and lastly, we're very agnostic about where the data goes at the end of it. So if you want to export back out to Power BI so that you have a chart, you know, where you want to visualize yeah. it. If you really just want to send a list that you're going to go send to your marketing team so they know who to attack, right? You can export a flat file. Um, if you want to write back out to a database, you can do that. If you want to create an actual chart that you're going to put in email or whatever, you can do that. Try to download.